In this episode, the new Honda Pilot gets an off-road version. Mini teach you how to drive a manual, and Amazon's new electric delivery vans. Welcome to episode 134 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Derek? Mr. Michael Rowell. Good news. Oh? There is a hurricane out there. Did you happen to see the track of said hurricane, Nicole? Uh, you and I had a brief conversation about it. Uh, it looks like it's going right back for Florida again. Funny enough, I showed the first track to my buddy, and he's like, you know what it looks like? It looks like it got the memo, it got the email that, oh, that's right, I got to go hit Florida. Hold on, let me be right back. Skirt, right to the left, hit yeah. Florida, and then skirt all the way up the east coast of the U.S. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, pray for Florida because this is has potential to be a another bit of shit storm here after mm-hmm. Ian uh, blessed us with his presence a month and a half ago now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's it. It is what it is. Welcome to Florida. Mm-hmm. So with that, let's get into some news, shall we? Sure. And the first bit of news may actually help people if we get a hurricane here. <laughs> it could be a hurricane response vehicle. Ooh, okay. Hey. It's the new Honda Pilot, the 2023 Honda Pilot. Uh, and it's worth talking about because it doesn't look like a minivan anymore. Hmm, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. So what do you think about that? I, I kind of like it. I'm going to be honest. Uh, my mother-in-law has the current model year pilot. This new 2023, I like a lot better. Really? Yeah. I love the look of the new pilot. This one that we're looking at on screen, the 2023 versus the 2022 or 2021. From this angle, it's given me Subaru vibes. You, you know what it's given me? What? Forerunner vibes. Yes, I can see that. And it is technically supposed to be the logical competitor to the Forerunner. And uh, it actually now looks more competitive to the Forerunner. So the marketing material is them Mm off-roading, kind of. What is it trying to be? A Forerunner with a Honda badge. Really? I think so. Is that always what the pilot was? Well, I don't think so. Mm, Not totally. No. I I think the pilot had some off-roadiness to it when it was very, very, very first introduced many, many moons ago. And then they realized it was being bought exclusively by soccer moms. Yes. And then they went, hmm, we don't really need this. (laughs) And then I think they went away from it, and then they just stuck with the minivan vibes without actually being a van. I think you might be right about that. And that is exactly how I remember the pilot as well. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah, it went from a little bit of, like, kind of can do something off-road-ish to, like, just a straight-up minivan with more of an SUV body. But it has to do both now, at least from what I can see from these photos. Mm -hmm. So, let's talk about it. It does get a new engine. It is the same displacement, same amount of cylinders, but it is not a single overhead cam. It is now a double overhead cam. So it is a DOHC, or I always like to cam, uh, a dock. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, same 3.5 liter V6. Uh, Instead of producing 280 horsepower like the previous year or previous generation, it's going up to, you ready for this? 285. Ooh. (sighs) <laughs> Five more horsepowers. Yes. Not a lot. Power. It's more. It's more. It's more. We'll get into it if it's enough in a second, but it's more. Uh, it does have 262 uh, pound feet of torque coming from that three and a half liter V6. Uh, and it does uh, have a great big amount of speeds. It's kind of 10 speed auto, well, whereas the previous generation had a nine speed. So that'll help get that uh, all of the whopping 285 horsepowers and the 262 torques to the ground a little more efficiently. In and it theory. is an automatic, so that's fine. It just yeah. rolls through the gears. Exactly. You just have a lot of them. Um, So it doesn't have like a weight listed, but I need to talk about the horsepower here. Hmm. I think it needs 300 horsepower or a lot more torque. 
having a person that has driven one of these. I think I drove a 2004 Pilot. I think that's what my mother had. Uh, they're not particularly fast, though mm-hmm. they're not touted to be. They don't really need to be. Correct. People who drive them don't drive them for speed. It's probably fuel economy is more important. I agree, but stay with me. I have reasons. Okay, Jeremy Clarkson, hit me. <laughs> okay, so it needs more power because if it's going to be off roady, it needs to actually be able to go off road with enough power to get over something. Ah, uh, why does it need to be off roady? Why? Because why doesn't it? Because it has a trim called the Trail Sport. Is it a Jeep or is it a mommy missile? What is it? It's mommy Jeep missile. That's not a thing. Mm, you're right. You're it, right. But it seems like they're going away from what I expect a pilot to be, which is just bring the kids to soccer practice and back. So hear me out. I think this car needs 300 horsepower, so not a whole lot more, 15 more horsepower. And I think it needs about another 100 torques. Whoa. Stay with me again. The type of people that are going to take this new Honda Pilot and do the things we see on screen where it's going over some very articulated kind of deep dirt ruts and things are probably also the kind of people that are going to tow a trailer or a camper to go do those kind of things off-road. And it's going to be a, a pretty hard time towing a, an RV or a camper with two adults and two kids and probably a dog and the weight of your camping supplies. If you've only got 285 horsepower and 262 torques. If this car had 300 to a 350 torque and 300 closer to horsepower with its weight, that would make more sense. That would make it more actually capable off-road is my thought. It's, I'm not saying give it 850 horsepower and do 0 to 60 in 1.8 seconds. No, I don't give a shit about that. It's realistically, if you're going to do off-roady things with the Trail Sport trim, it kind of needs some more grunt to be able to kind of do that. I agree if that's the path that they're trying to go down here, which looking at the marketing photos, it seems like that's what they're trying to portray this to be, and it seems like that's what they designed it to be. Uh, it just feels odd that that's not, I don't think that that's the market share that currently drives the pilot. Agree. It's weird. Agree. I think they're trying to steal market share from the forerunner. If you're going to tow stuff, don't you think that dad has the the truck to tow anyway? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's the thing. I mean, they're going to offer this new pilot with a bunch of different trims. You're going to get the Sport, the EXL, the Touring, the Elite trim, and the Trail Sport trim. So hmm. those are your multiple trims. Uh, yeah. The Trail Sport, the off-road version that we're seeing here, that's called the Trail Sport trim. It's got a cool color. I love the color. It looks beefy. It looks great, in my opinion. Uh, but they actually did give it some off-roadness to it. So the Trail Sport is actually from factory lifted a little bit higher. So it's on a, a bit more of a, a lift system. It's got a, a pretty trick all-wheel drive system that will kind of precisely send just the perfect amount of power to each wheel. Um, it does have steel skids steel skid plates if i could speak correctly that'd be great um and some big knobby off-road tires so it it's got some substance to make it do stuff but it just i don't know it needs more power in like a year i want to go on social media and try to find the honda pilot off-roading club (laughs) will that be a thing the honda pilot trail sport off-road enthusiast (laughs) sure (laughs) whatever they're going to call themselves because you know all the cars that have, or all the vehicles that have the off-road capability have that that group, right? Uh, yeah, I'm still act, actively engaged in a couple of the Tacoma groups. Mm-hmm. And the Tacoma's a perfect truck for that. That's fine. Yeah. This feels weird to do. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like a real off-roady kind of thing. No. And also, if you were going to off-road it and they wanted more torque, I wonder why they didn't just go EV. Because... Or slap a turbocharger on it. <laughs> sure. Like, <laughs> don't know. Don't know. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't Weird tell you. Vehicle. Yeah. Uh, apparently, the previous gen uh, prices are between thirty-nine grand to fifty-nine grand, or fifty-three grand ish. So expect these to be a bit more. Probably mm. base at forty-one to 
your highest at 56 or that something like that. Seems about right for this kind of vehicle, though. Yeah, that's all yeah. kind of what... It's crazy to think that a, a regular SUV is a 40 thousand dollars car. Yep. That just seems wild to me. It's not a $25,000 vehicle anymore. No, it's there's just... there, there's no, like, regular SUV that's, nope. like, ooh, ooh. The cheap stuff is thirty grand now. Yeah, that's just nuts. Yeah. But I digress. That is all about the new 2023 Honda Pilot. So that's all I got there. Ready to move on? Sure. Okay. So moving on to something that I think we both are going to enjoy here. Uh, hashtag save the manuals. Yes, many is being a savior of the manual transmission here. Mini USA is launching a special learn to drive manual transmission school. Ooh. So they're doing their own driving course specifically to teach people how to drive a shtick. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Huh. Caught my attention too. Yes. This is neat. Very. Do you know of any other manufacturers that are doing this not that i know of i know okay so hold on i know for a while if you bought a new it was like the dodge challenger hellcat or whatever the 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 highest trim was they would give you i don't know either a discount or a free day at their performance driving school i don't remember what it was called but i remember that was a thing okay uh but i don't remember anyone doing a specific how to drive manual school course for people that want to learn how to drive a manual that's neat that's very neat because usually the situation is what is your closest friend that has a manual car that is willing to sacrifice their clutch Co- correct yes 100 <laughs> percent. that's always how it goes <laughs> but i guess now they're willing to do it yeah since mini uh, has actually revived the manual transmission some of the recent models like coopers and cooper s's and stuff like that i guess they decided now's as best a time as any to launch a how to drive a manual driving school course thing okay do you have any more details on it a little bit not tons um it's gonna be held out at the bmw performance center so which is at the thermal club which is essentially a private race track course club it's kind of think of it like a country club for race car enthusiasts (laughs) <laughs> I uh, do believe that IndyCar was talking about doing a race there soon. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's out in California, Palm Springs, California. Uh, it is supposed to specifically teach people and focus, uh, I guess the curriculum itself, focus on vehicle controls, finding the friction point, practicing smooth starts, stops, acceleration, and more. And that is a quote here from many. Um, apparently, at the end of the course, they're going to give you some sort of like timed course to, to like test on what you've learned and how you can do it and not which across. that's what it sounds like to me yes and i'll be honest it sounds like a lot of fun it does <laughs> yes, it does <laughs> it sounds like something that i would really just want to do yeah no that's neat that's super cool i i wonder if there's a business model there to be had for like guys like me and you where we just bulk buy clutches figure out the most efficient car to be able to swap them out and teach people how to drive them. So here's what we've learned from being in the driving instruction yeah. industry. You're in it. Uh, it ain't going to work. Really? No one wants to anymore. True. We get maybe, Jesus, what? Four or five requests a year Ooh. for people saying, I got a manual. Can you teach me? Or I really want to learn how to drive manual. Can you teach me how? Sure, but you got to supply the manual. Yeah. Hmm. I love what they're doing because I want the manual transmissions to stay alive. I don't want them to die. But I fear it's not going to work. No. And it's it's not far off of being dead. <laughs> yeah, there's not enough. There's not enough people that want to learn how, sadly. Right. Like I'll even ask my students, are you even a little curious? Would you? Is it something you'd be kind of interested in, where you might possibly want to? And it just seems like uh, the vast majority, ninety percent, eighty percent, me, 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 sure, but me. 
that's more of a symptom of people finding driving as a chore mm-hmm. and not an enjoying task. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they don't have any pricing released yet. Apparently, it's supposed to be available starting sometime in the first quarter of 2023. So for people that have not been in finance, that would be January, February, March. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I wish them the best. I would love to see this be successful. Um, but I fear the average buyer that's buying a new mini to learn how to drive manual in is probably not going to fly or drive all the way to California unless you happen to live just outside of Palm Springs, California. I can't see some fella in Indiana that I don't know. He bought his daughter a mini and she looks up to Danica Patrick and is going to say, yeah, I'll fly my daughter to Palm Springs, California to learn how to drive manual in this new mini I bought her. Nope. I wish him the best. I really, really do. I just, I don't think that the mini market is the market for that. Maybe the supercar hypercar market is because the clientele buying those cars have the money to fly across the country and probably take a driving school. But if you're driving or buying one of those cars, likely the manufacturer is probably willing to teach you on your car anyway, or you already have a manual that's cheaper. Or you still don't care because the supercar you just bought isn't even a manual and it's all just paddle shifters now anyway. True. Unless you buy that new Koenigsegg with that, like <laughs> the double <laughs> weird, you go automatic to actual manual, that thing. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I I wish them the absolute very best, but... Seems a little too late for this, mm-hmm. to be honest. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. But, All right. Yeah, that's the mini manual driving school. Yeah. Let's move on. So let's talk about an electric van. And this is something that you actually... I believe this was maybe like one of your very first I wish they would have was like I think ever maybe <laughs> you said that you wished that like the just the regular sprinter vans that delivered stuff for like Amazon and UPS and all that were electric. Don't even get me started. Mm. I will go. <laughs> well, uh, I'm about to absolutely pull the handle on you here. All right. The next news article is about Rivian and their electric vans delivering for Amazon. Oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't even know if I need to say anything else. Go ahead. <laughs> Daddy Bezos, he comes calling, and he wants his vans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. T- tell me what this article says, and then I'll give you my Derek opinion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, according to the article, there is now over a 1,000 Rivian delivery vans delivering for Amazon since they launched in July. And they are expecting to have, and I'm going to give a little quote here, the company plans to have multiple thousands, thousands, as in plural thousand, um, on the road by the end of 2022. So essentially saying by the holiday season for all the people that are ordering their gifts on the 23rd and need delivered by the 24th, uh, it may be delivered by a Rivian electric Amazon van. Okay. Uh, yeah, apparently they have this, uh, this order in from, uh, well, I guess Amazon has the order in Rivian that they are looking for 100,000 electric vans by 2030. That's a lot. Especially since they're building like 12 to 15,000 cars per year. <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> Not a lot. Obviously, they're going to have to scale that up, but like, eesh. Yes. So Amazon owns roughly 18% equity in Rivian. Mm. So they don't own majority, but they have enough to throw their weight around. Um, this is a very blatant, great idea if you're Amazon. <laughs> but if you're Rivian and you're pinched for money, you're pinched for floor space, and you have a bunch of R1Ts and R1Ss that are on order but haven't actually been produced and people want them. When Daddy Bezos comes calling and he wants his 100,000 vans for his big money-making monopoly and Mm -hmm. he owns almost 20% of you, Mm -hmm. you're really in a weird spot. Mm -hmm. And that's where they're at. You kind of can't because I believe 
Amazon invested, was it like 700 something million dollars? Yeah, it's a lot of money. Like a, a, a an absorbent amount of money in Amazon. I think there's a quote in terms of the amount of money. Uh, yeah, a seven hundred million dollar investment in two thousand nineteen. Mm-hmm. It totally makes sense for these vans to be electric, right? You charge them overnight. It gives them enough energy to be able to drive around the day. It's start stop. Electric motors are great at it. They have, from what I saw in some video recently, they have a bunch of efficiency stuff to be able to figure out how to order the packages to go around the vehicle correctly. You're scanning the packages as you come in and out. They've made the steps and everything very efficient and easy for the the drivers to get in and out of. It all looks great. The problem is making enough of them right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Not so sure how they're going to have plural thousands of them. They're going to have to figure it out. Does that mean 2001? (laughs) <laughs> likely Te- technically that is thousands there right. is a plural amount of thousand there is a major gap that i don't know what company is going to fill but whoever fills it is going to be filthy rich when they fill the gap of the ups the usps the the amazons the fedex trucks in making them all efficient evs that can just be driven daily charged up you're not going to go more than 400 miles on them you're doing local routes Mm -hmm. it's a brilliant idea i don't know why no one has done it yet and they're big deals big contracts thousands of vehicles hundreds of thousands of i mean hundreds of millions of dollars for these Mm -hmm. contracts i don't know why no one's done it here's a chance derek i'm not doing it (laughs) it's a lot of work yeah apparently some of the new cities that it's going to be rolled out to are Austin, Texas, Boston, Massachusetts, Denver, Colorado, Houston, Texas, Indianapolis, Indiana, Las Vegas, Nevada, Madison, Newark, New York, Oakland, Pittsburgh, Portland, Provo, and Salt Lake City are some of the high points there. Any metropolitan area, this will work great. Yeah, you got uh, many millions of people living in a small square mile area. Oh, yeah, you can expect your package delivered by an electric uh, box. Where it won't work is the middle of Montana. Correct. You're just going to have to drive diesel trucks around. You know what, though? That would be such a pretty delivery route. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. (laughs) Such a gorgeous scenery to deliver packages in the middle of Montana. But you deliver a package, and then you have five hours to your next package. Well, that's fine. (laughs) You have a five-hour beautiful drive. (laughs) (laughs) I guess so. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, apparently that's the news there, that they're planning on producing more than a 1,000 up to plural thousands. I suspect that next year they're going to be trying to do tens of thousands, and then the next year after that, like hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If Rivian can't figure out their manufacturing nonsense, they ain't going to be able to fulfill that 100,000 electric deli- delivery vans by 2030. No. And then... Uh, when someone like Bezos holds an almost 20% uh, stake in your company, that can end fatally for the company. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't like the way things have happened. And we know he doesn't like it because he's publicly tweeted at RJ, I can't remember his last name, who's the CEO of Rivian. And his tweet was something along the lines of, where's my Vans? Mm-hmm. Oof. Yeah, I feel like if Bezos isn't happy, he's going to do something with that $700 million investment and take it to somewhere else. And then Rivian, your R1T, will be the most rare thing in the world. It it'll almost is now. <laughs> Fair. So, yeah, that's all the news I got for you. You got anything else? I do not. All right, that's going to wrap us up for episode 134. Thanks so much for watching and listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please leave a thumbs up and a comment on the video. Let us know if you've already seen a Rivian electric van delivering Amazon packages to your door. Drop a comment. Don't forget to hit subscribe while you're there. We've been uh, starting to grow with some subscribers here. Uh, Uploaded some shorts. Check them out. Pretty cool. Don't forget, please do leave us a five-star rating on any uh, audio platform you listen to, right? Uh, Apple, Spotify. Google, whatever the case it is, don't forget us about us. Don't forget about us there. And our social, on social, Facebook is We Are Auto. YouTube is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto underscore, and our website is We Auto.io. Please do check it out for all some of your favorite past races. Thanks so much. Catch you guys in the next one.
Peace.